Joining us now is Republican Congressman from New York and member of the Main Street Caucus, Mike Lawler. Congressman, thank you very much. I hear you have an opinion about Matt Gates and that you do think he should be expelled. Oh, I think he should be expelled from the conference, no question. Uh, he violated the conference rules by bringing the motion to vacate <laughs> forward uh, without a majority of the majority uh, and teamed up with 208 Democrats uh, to remove a duly elected House Republican speaker. He undermined the conference, he undermined the institution, and he undermined the country. Uh, and he doesn't care. Uh, and so to me, uh, I don't really see why we would have him part of our conference uh, going forward. Uh, it's clear he's not somebody who's willing to work within the conference uh, and wants to associate himself more with House Democrats uh, to remove a Republican speaker. So uh, I certainly believe uh, that he should be removed from conference. What about the other seven who voted alongside him, side of him? What do you think of them? Uh, I, I think, unfortunately, uh, you know, some of them uh, were useful idiots in this crusade on, on Matt Gaetz's part. Uh, it was petty. It was personal. Uh, and it really, again, undermined uh, the, the conference and the institution. Look, voters elected a House Republican majority to govern the House, to serve as a check and balance on the reckless spending of the Biden administration, $5 trillion in new spending in two years. Uh, totally unsustainable. Uh, and they wanted us to do something about the border. Unfortunately, these eight individuals torpedoed the conference, uh, took out our best player on, on the field, uh, if you will, uh, and, and created a constitutional crisis. Uh, we need to get a new speaker elected. We need to get back uh, to doing the work of the American people. Uh, holding this administration accountable, reigning in spending, uh, dealing with our southern border, which in my home state of New York has created an absolute calamity. You have the mayor of New York City saying that the migrant crisis is destroying New York City. The governor saying there's no more room at the inn. We need to uh, slow down the influx at the border. Uh, we have real challenges, yeah. uh, and this this prevents us from dealing with those challenges. I think you're right about the border, and especially in a place like New York, where it is coming to a head. And, and I and I have questions about uh, the bipartisan nature of. of the House and whether it can work together. But I, I do want to get um, your uh, take on the two people that are currently now, I guess, leading the conversation about leading the House, Steve Scalise and Jim Jordan. Do you support either one of them? Well, so let me just comment on the bipartisan nature of the House real quick. I, I think there was an opportunity yesterday, frankly. Uh, I am a member of Problem Solvers. We did have a meeting. Uh, and I think there was an opportunity for folks to put uh, the country above the insanity. Uh, and all 208 Democrats that were here uh, voted with Matt Gates. I think it was an opportunity that was missed. Uh, and I think it you know, left a lot of people with a bad taste in their mouth about the the ability of problem yeah, solvers you know, I, uh, to function. My understanding from the Democrats, uh, part of the problem was that Kevin McCarthy just wasn't trustworthy for the Democrats, that he needed them to help pass the funding bill, and then he went on TV and blamed them for trying to shut down the government when that just wasn't the reality. They felt like there wasn't, well, he wasn't with, a trustworthy with, with partner. All, with all, due, me, with all due respect, I've never, seen, I've never seen a Speaker of the House that's not partisan. Nancy Pelosi was as partisan as they come. Hakeem Jeffries literally met with us uh, two weeks ago on the issue of uh, a CR and potential shutdown and said, oh, I don't want to politicize this. On the same day, House Majority Forward dropped mailers and TV ads attacking people like me. So, I mean, I, I let's understand. be real. There's, there's We're all partisan, adults. We all, understand, we all understand the partisan nature forth. of politics. But let me, let me ask you this. If you want to come to a bipartisan um, coalition, I mean, you're from New York. You're from a moderate district. You're from a place where people want to see the House function. They want to see compromise. They want to see bipartisan legislation. Obviously, you're, you're a Republican in New York. Is there not somebody that you think that can cross the aisle, that can do that, that can find that middle part of the party in order to get things done? Because there are some big issues facing us, immigration, as you've said, but also the government needs to be funded, and there's 31 days to do so. 
Well, there's a reason that folks like me won, and that was because Democrats had one-party rule in Washington, Albany, and New York City for the first time in our nation's history. And voters want balance. They want compromise. They want common sense. We are in a divided government. Any final legislation is going to have to be bipartisan, which is why the Speaker agreed to a bipartisan CR on Saturday to keep the government open and funded. He had exhausted all options to get a Republican plan through the House to yeah. negotiate with the Senate. So, and my colleagues torpedoed that. And, and, and that's so what we, we all What's have, happen we next? all have a responsibility. We yeah. all have a responsibility to govern. What's and that is what, what I'm what next? I'm here to do. We are going to meet next week as a conference uh, and elect a speaker. This is not going to be a speaker uh, that is elected by Democrats. Uh, Democrats just removed uh, the Republican speaker. So I don't see how uh, you're going to get to 218 uh, without it being the choice of the House Republican majority. It's going to have to be. But Do you there's no question long term, we have to find balance, we have to find compromise, and we have to find bipartisanship in a divided government. I, I think you're right about that. Let me ask you about specifically Jim Jordan or Steve Scalise. Do you support either one of them? Do you think either one of them will play in your district? After all, if you don't win again, it's going to be harder for Republicans to maintain control of the House next year. I haven't made any decision as to who I will be supporting for speaker. I think we have a lot of talented people in our party. I think it's unfortunate that we took our best player off the field. Uh, Kevin McCarthy uh, was the right person to lead this conference. So there's going to have to be a, a, a reckoning uh, within the conference going forward and, and determining who's the best person uh, to lead us. Do you think uh, Steve Scalise of, or Jim of, Jordan helps you in your reelection bid? I have a lot of questions uh, with respect to, number one, accountability for the eight that torpedoed the conference. Uh, number two, the motion to vacate and changing that rule. Uh, number three, how we are going to build consensus to get to 218, uh, you know, in the House. Uh, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to the conversations and, and hearing the answers uh, from those that are seeking this position. Uh, and, and I'm here today because I'm uh, speaking to a lot of my colleagues yeah. uh, to determine the path forward. And you're speaking to a big audience uh, that watches us from New York. And, and I think I'm just trying to get you nailed down on this because, again, you're going to be a power broker, as Punchbowl News has described you going forward, because you are one of those frontline Republicans who needs to get reelected again. And do you think hardliners like Steve Scalise or Jim Jordan, who have ha are lightning uh, poles among a lot of Democrats again. and moderates, it, at the end of the day, I didn't get you. elected. I didn't, I didn't get elected because of who the leader is. Uh, I got elected because I represent my district and I made the case to the cons my constituents on the issues. Uh, and my Democrat opponent, Sean Patrick Maloney, the chair of the DCCC, uh, voted 100 percent of the time with Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi. Voters want balance. I represent that. So this isn't ultimately, I'm not concerned about uh, the impact of this on 2024. We need to elect a speaker. We will see who can build consensus to get to 218 uh, and then move forward and focus on the work of the American people, because that's why we're here. Yeah. This isn't about personalities. It's not about, uh, you know, leadership. It is about doing the work of the American